Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, David Copperfield. After much anticipation, hundreds of pages of paperwork related to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein have been unsealed and released. And we're digging into the high-profile people named in that new paperwork. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Okay, so here we are. The Jeffrey Epstein unsealed documents. Well, some of them. So far, we believe 40 documents have been released with around 250 expected to eventually be unsealed, which is thousands of pages of information, by the way. Now, let's not forget the context of what we're talking about here. So Jeffrey Epstein was the financier who was awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges when he was found dead in his jail cell in 2019 from an apparent suicide. This is the same guy who, by the way, pled guilty in 2008 to soliciting and procuring a minor for prostitution out in Florida. That deal helped him escape federal charges and minimal jail time with work release privileges. His accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell, was convicted of child sex trafficking in 2021. She's currently serving a 20-year sentence in Florida prison. Now, all of these newly unsealed documents that we're talking about, that the media is talking about, they all stem from a lawsuit filed by an alleged victim, Virginia Roberts. She now goes by her married name, Virginia Jufre. She claims Epstein and her co-conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, set her up to be assaulted by various men, including, she says, by Prince Andrew, the Duke of York. Roberts sued Maxwell for defamation in 2015. Case ended up being settled. But media outlets requested all of these documents involved in this case to be made public. Well, Judge Loretta Preska of the Southern District of New York decided that the dozens of names connected to Epstein and Maxwell will be, quote, unsealed in full. The reason, of course, is because a lot of this information is already public. Now, Judge Preska issued an order that only Doe's 107 and 110 argued against unsealing, the former claiming unsealing would cause her physical harm. So while Doe 107 has until January 22nd to submit arguments in opposition, the rest have informed the court that they will begin filing the unsealed records. So it appears that we are going to see more of these documents on a rolling basis. But what do we have so far? Well, it's being reported that about 90 names have been listed in these documents. More than 170 in total will eventually be unsealed. Associates, friends, victims, people that deny being connected to Epstein's wrongdoing in any way. And that is important to note. Before you even get into this, when we talk about these people or you see their names listed, or you see their names in a headline, it doesn't mean that they were part of Epstein's alleged sex trafficking ring, or they're on Epstein's list, or that they committed a crime, or even knew what was going on. Okay, we want to make that clear. But having said that, some of the biggest names revealed in these documents include some we expected because they were already named or mentioned in previous court filings or articles or seen in photos with Epstein and Maxwell, like former President Bill Clinton or Prince Andrew and Donald Trump. Some of the new names you might not have heard of include actors Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Blanchett. Naomi Campbell is mentioned, Cameron Diaz, Bruce Willis, Stephen Hawking, magician David Copperfield. We're going to get into it, but to give you an example when we mention these names in the documents, for example, an alleged Epstein victim is asked about a press report that she met Kate Blanchett or Leonardo DiCaprio, to which she responds that she didn't meet them. But, quote, when I was massaging him, meaning Jeffrey Epstein, he would be on the phone a lot of the time. And one time he said, oh, that was Leonardo or that was Kate Blanchett or Bruce Willis, that kind of thing. Essentially, that Epstein was name dropping. George Lucas's name makes an appearance in the documents. But again, this alleged victim was asked if she ever gave him a massage and she said no. Michael Jackson is also mentioned in these documents. An accuser says that she met him at one point at Epstein's home in Palm Beach, Florida, but says nothing sexual happened. So again, you hear these names, very high profile. They're connected to Jeffrey Epstein, but they might not be as nefarious as you might believe. With that in mind, let's get into some of the more major details, and let's start with former President Bill Clinton, identified as Doe 36 in the documents. Now, Clinton has not been accused of any wrongdoing, but he had previously traveled on Epstein's private jet during philanthropic work for the Clinton Foundation. According to an alleged victim, Johanna Joberg, Epstein at one point had said, quote, Clinton liked them young, referring to young girls. Now, again, this is Epstein saying this. It is important to note, though, that Joberg never met the former president or saw him 
on Epstein's little St. James Island, Epstein's Island. Other mentions of Bill Clinton are brought up in reference to whether Giuffre's lawyers would be allowed to depose him in the defamation suit, which the judge ultimately denied. In one filing, it said, while Ms. Giuffre made no allegations of illegal actions by Bill Clinton, Ms. Maxwell, in her deposition, raised Ms. Giuffre's comments about President Clinton as one of the obvious lies to which she was referring in her public statement that formed the basis of the suit. Apart from the defendant, Mr. Epstein, former President Clinton, is a key person who can provide information about the close relationship with defendant Maxwell and Mr. Epstein and disprove Ms. Maxwell's claims. So to give you a little bit more context there. There was something interesting, though, about Bill Clinton. So on January 10th, 2015, Maxwell emailed her agent, Ross Goh, after he had called Jufre a liar on his client Maxwell's behalf. And she wrote him, quote, I have already suffered such a terrible and painful loss over the last few days that I can't even see what life after press will even looks like. Statements that don't address all just lead to more questions. What is my relationship to Clinton? Andrew, on and on. Let's rest till Monday. I need headspace. All right, going from one former president to another, former President Donald Trump. Now, we already knew that Trump and Epstein had a relationship back in the 1990s. Trump had previously called Epstein a terrific guy, says the two later had a falling out. Now, while the documents mention former President Donald Trump, they do not reference any wrongdoing on his part. So one new interesting tidbit is that Ms. Joburg says that when she was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet, at one point they diverted to New Jersey because of bad weather, and she claims Epstein said, quote, great, we'll call up Trump and we'll go to the casino. She said that she and Jufre, who was also on the plane, didn't gamble at the casino because Jufre was too young. Joburg also testified in the documents that she was never asked to give Trump a massage. By the way, Jufre testified when she was 17, she was working as a spa attendant at Trump's Mar-a-Lago in Florida, but was lured away to become a masseuse for Epstein, which involved performing sexual acts. Moving on, we have Prince Andrew. Now, we have covered the allegations against Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, extensively here on Sidebar and on Long Crime in general. But Jufre accused him of being one of the people that she had sex with as a minor. He settled a lawsuit with her out of court for reportedly millions of dollars, but he continues to deny any wrongdoing. But talking about these documents, I mentioned that email from Maxwell where she references Prince Andrew, but there is more in these new documents. So once again, going to Ms. Schoberg, she says Prince Andrew groped her breast while they were taking a photo in Epstein's Manhattan apartment in 2001, and this involved, of all things, a puppet. Yeah. So Joburg explained, quote, at one point, Ghislaine told me to come upstairs and we went into a closet and pulled out the puppet, the caricature of Prince Andrew and brought it down. And there was a little tag on the puppet that said Prince Andrew on it. And that's when I knew who he was. It looked like him. And she brought it down and presented it to him. And that was a great joke because apparently it was a production from a show on BBC. And they decided to take a picture with it, in which Virginia and Andrew sat on a couch. They put the puppet on Virginia's lap, and I sat on Andrew's lap, and they put the puppet's hand on Virginia's breast, and Andrew put his hand on my breast, and they took a photo. Strange stuff. But there's more in these documents. Another Epstein accuser claims that she was told to sleep with Prince Andrew during an orgy on his island. A court filing from 2014 alleges that she was forced to have sex with the prince when she was a minor in at least three places in Maxwell's apartment in London, in New York, and on Little St. James Island, Epstein's Island. Okay, now let's talk about Professor Stephen Hawking, the deceased physicist. He's mentioned as having participated in an orgy with underage girls. Yeah, but not exactly what you might be thinking. So there is this email from Epstein to Maxwell in 2015. By the way, this came after Jufre filed the lawsuit. And Epstein is telling Maxwell that she could issue a reward to any of Jufre's associates who come forward and prove her allegations are false, including that Stephen Hawking partook in an underage orgy. So it's not that there's evidence that he actually did this. This email is suggesting that any kind of claim about that is false, and Epstein is trying to get somebody to come forward to say it's false. Just bizarre, nonetheless. By the way, Stephen Hawking, he died in 2018. All right, we want to thank Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. I think it's pretty clear 
from the stories that we cover that it is not always safe out there. And when you're hurt, it can be pretty confusing. It can be scary, and you really don't know where to turn. Well, Morgan & Morgan is actually the largest injury law firm in America. And at a time when you already have so much to think about, they make it super easy for you. They have completely modernized the process because you can submit your claim, you sign contracts, you upload documents, you talk to your whole legal team all on your phone. That's it. Yeah, an attorney is going to review your case in just eight clicks. They also have 4,000 support staff that can help you too, which is amazing to think about. And in terms of price, well, you only pay them if you win. There's no upfront fee. So if you're injured and you want to join the over 3 million people that call them every year, you can submit a claim at www.forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law, that's pound 529 on your phone. Here's a name for you, magician David Copperfield. Copperfield was actually previously subpoenaed in a litigation connected to Epstein. He was never deposed, but there was an allegation that Copperfield had visited Epstein in the past. Back to Ms. Joburg, she testified that she met Copperfield at a dinner at one of Epstein's homes. She says Copperfield performed some magic tricks before asking her, and this is important, if she, Joburg, was aware that, quote, girls were getting paid to find other girls. Hmm. She says he didn't really go into any further detail, including whether the girls were underage. Odd comment, maybe, but what is interesting about that and important about that is that Epstein and Maxwell, they were accused of using some of their victims as recruiters to find more girls to abuse. So interesting to think of that comment. Actress and model Naomi Campbell has previously been linked to Maxwell and Epstein through flight logs and photos. She admitted in 2019 that she was introduced to Epstein through her then boyfriend and said he was often front and center of Victoria's Secret shows. She's mentioned in these new documents, but it's pretty benign. One of the accusers is being questioned about when she was forced to have sex with someone and says, quote, it was around the same time as Naomi Campbell had a birthday party. Now, Campbell has denied knowing anything about his illegal activities, saying, quote, what he's done is indefensible. And when I heard what he'd done, it sickened me to my stomach. I have had my fair share of sexual predators. All right, here's one we got to talk about. Very prominent lawyer, Alan Dershowitz. Now, Dershowitz has been mentioned before in connection with Jufre and Epstein. In 2022, Jufre withdrew an allegation against Dershowitz, saying that she may have made a mistake when she identified him as one of her abusers. Jufre actually withdrew an allegation against Dershowitz. But according to these documents, a person only identified as Jane Doe number 3, who was a minor, says she was forced to have sex with Dershowitz in Florida, New York, New Mexico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and private planes. Jane Doe 3 was then instructed to report back to Epstein about what happened. The documents also claim that Dershowitz was an eyewitness to other sexual abuse. Two housekeepers of Epstein testified that Dershowitz came, quote, pretty often to Epstein's Florida mansion and got massages while he was there. One of these employees said that Dershowitz was, quote, present alone at the home of Epstein without his family in the presence of young girls. Now, Dershowitz has always maintained that he did nothing wrong and that he supported the release of the court documents. According to the documents, too, Epstein and his alleged co-conspirators previously pled the fifth before answering questions about Alan Dershowitz. Now, there are several other politicians and financial powerhouses that were mentioned in the documents, including billionaire hedge fund manager Glenn Dubin. Jufre claims that she was forced to have sex with him, which Dubin denies. She also named late New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson as one of the people she gave a massage to, but said she couldn't remember the date it happened. Richardson denied in September of last year. He denied all the claims. Jean-Luc Brunel is also talked about several times. He's the French modeling agent who killed himself in a Paris jail in 2022, awaiting trial on rape charges. Giuffre also said that she had sex with Hyatt Hotel's billionaire Tom Pritzker and was trafficked to a Spanish president that she could not name. Then there's famous hairdresser Frederic Fakai. Back to Ms. Schoberg, she testified in 2016 that when she was giving Epstein a massage, she said, quote, I heard him call someone and say, Fakai is in Hawaii. Can we find some girls for him? And Schoberg was asked, what was your reaction to that? And she said, quote, well, I was massaging and I didn't have a reaction. I tried to remain reactionless a whole five years. Well, with that, more documents are expected to be released in the coming days on a rolling basis. And as I mentioned, at least two Jane Doe's have argued against their names being unsealed. I'm sure this isn't the last episode that we are going to do 
on the Epstein document release saga. But for now, that's all we have for you here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time. Thank you.